Hello sports fans, James Williams here for Sports Minded. Just want to give you a quick rundown of everything that is going on today. Quite a busy day in sports uh, so far and it's only going to be 3 o'clock Pacific time over here. Um, with that being said, I mean if you just look at what we have going on, a lot of people are already starting to forget with some of the other news. Um, I know you guys probably clicked, with, uh, clicked on this video uh, because of the title. Um, when I talk about a bomb scare, I'll get more into that later, so just stay with me. Uh, but with that being said, um, if you guys don't already know, we are still in the playoff season um, for both the NBA and the NHL. So just want to let you guys know that the NHL uh, Stanley Cup final, excuse me, I guess they don't call it the playoffs um, after the finals. It's called the Stanley Cup finals. Um, so you do have two two teams, both representing the their respective conference. Um, Going into this, uh, you have the Boston Bruins and the Chicago Blackhawks. Um, both teams have been really impressive so far in the playoffs. Um, if you just look at, at the teams, I mean, just give you their records. Uh, the win-loss record for the Boston Bruins is 28-14 uh, and 14, um, so far in, in the regular season matchups. Uh, you also have Chicago with 36-7. and seven. Um, They were, the, the Blackhawks, that is, were the number one team coming in. Uh, at the top seed the team um, you I mean they also they they're considered to be the favorites um, at least for game one anyways and I mean of course when you're when you have a home field advantage and you're playing in Chicago you will be the favorite but um, I mean with them being the top rated seed which usually doesn't mean anything but of course with most people uh, that will make them the favorite I guess you can say but uh, moving along from that uh, I mentioned the bomb scare I get um I I knew someone who was there um so he was able to tell me a lot of what happened I guess there was a bomb scare of some sort um, on the set of first take in San Antonio um Skip Bayless yeah the show with Skip Bayless and Stephen A Smith as everyone knows were both there on the set talking waiting for Chris Broussard to come on they were going to do a segment or whatever it was like the last 30 minutes of the show and they had to cancel it they went to commercial and they just never came back and they restarted the show and showing the first 30 minutes to fill that last 30 minutes because they they pulled every the I guess the police came in uh, took the stars of the show off the set um, told the crowd my one of the people I do know who was he was in the crowd and they said they moved him uh, up down the street or whatever uh, to kind of clear that area so pretty crazy scene going on I mean it's kind of weird because ESPN hasn't talked about it a whole lot um, I haven't seen a whole lot of other people really mention it um, so it's pretty crazy. I mean, I, I don't know if they're not waiting to comment. I don't know what, if, if they got more into his, who was behind it. Um, I don't know. That's also kind of a gray area right now. Um, we'll have to wait and see if ESPN does say anything about it. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I know it is true that they, they there was some movement going on within the show where they kind of had to shut everything down. Um, so it did happen, whether there was a real bomb a real threat, how the threat came about, um, that's still kind of up in the air. But this did happen in San Antonio, and the scent, and there goes my phone, uh, but with San Antonio, with the bomb scare going off for a show in San Antonio, let alone the fact that it was Skip Bayless and Stephen A. Smith, and it, they drive everybody crazy. But, um, I mean, maybe that was the reason uh, Chris Broussard was going to be on the show. I don't know. If maybe that was the reason a lot of people don't like Chris Broussard for whatever reason. Um, so, I mean, maybe it was that, but I don't know. I mean, this could be kind of scary going into uh, the next game. I mean, you got game four tomorrow. Oh, we're filming this here on Wednesday today, uh, June 6th. No, June 12th, excuse me. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. It's just kind of crazy how this is all going about, but uh, just stay tuned and we'll keep you updated with that. Pretty crazy stuff. Uh, what else do I have down here? We had talked about that. The bombing. Uh, let's talk about the NBA. I mean, that's what First Take was talking about when they got threatened with the bomb. Um, I'm in my house, so hopefully no one calls me and threatens me uh, with the bomb. Anyways, all jokes aside, uh, yeah, let's get into the NBA news. Um, I have a few articles up, uh, posted a lot of new content today on the Sports Minded website, sportsmindednews.com. Um, some interesting articles for you guys to check out. Uh, there's been an update with the Jason Kidd stuff and him, recently retired player, now less than a week or two later being the front runner for the head coaching job of his former team uh, well when they were in New Jersey now in Brooklyn so the Brooklyn Nets have more or less put an offer on the table or are in negotiations with Jason Kidd 
uh, for him to become the next head coach. There's uh, talk of him bringing his his coach at the time when he was with the Nets, I believe, uh, Lawrence Frank, I believe is his name. Uh, you guys may want to double check me on that one. Uh, but he may be on the coaching staff if you were to get the job. Um, while negotiations are said to have been taking place between the Nets and, the, and Jason Kidd, um, for whatever reason, they still plan to talk to Brian Shaw. Brian Shaw was with the Pacers um, this season and I think maybe the season before, but most notably known for being with uh, the Lakers as an assistant coach and a player when Shaq and Kobe were there. Um, so, I mean, interesting to see how that will all play out. Uh, it looks like Jason Kidd will get the job, but you never know. I mean, things can change around in a heartbeat. A lot of people are still waiting for uh, Brian Shaw to get his first job. Uh, with that being said, the Clippers jobs to open. Uh, the Bobcats filled their well, they didn't fill theirs. I guess they're just still open. Uh, they named associate head coach uh, to Patrick Ewing. Um, so Patrick Ewing and Michael Jordan. Haha, <laughs> funny. Um, so yeah, uh, with the there's a lot of coaching stuff going on. <clears throat> Speaking of coaching, Doc Rivers of the Boston Celtics um, is kind of stirring the pot a little bit. Um, for the Boston fans, I guess you can say. Um, kind of getting it back into their minds of the last few seasons. Anytime there seems to be a break and they're not in season, well, even, I guess, even when they are in season, there's always just talk about rumors uh, taking place um, with Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett. Uh, both of them were said to be on the move at one time. There's still talks of them being on the move. Um... So yeah, but Doc Rivers hinted today at some sort of changes taking place. Uh, didn't get all of what Doc Rivers was saying, but he hinted at some changes. Whether that means he will be leaving, um, there was talk of him. I guess he was supposed to be retiring, or he was thinking about retiring. Uh, I think for the simple fact that he just wanted to watch his kids grow up and play their different sports. I know Austin Rivers had just gotten drafted uh, last year, I think from Duke to play. Uh, where did he go? Not the Bobcats. Maybe the Bobcats. I don't know. Not worried about it. Or the Hornets. I think he went to the Hornets. Anyways, he just wanted to watch his kids. He, uh, he has a, a daughter as well, I believe, who's playing something in college right now. But, um, anyways. So, it, it could be Doc Rivers retiring, taking another job. Um, if you guys don't remember, Doc Rivers um, was requested... Um, by the Brooklyn Nets. He, the Nets contacted the Celtics asking if they could talk to Doc Rivers. Uh, I guess the Celtics denied them permission. But yeah, so Doc Rivers may either be retiring, uh, looking for a new job, looking for a fresh breath air, or some. I guess that's right. I don't know. Sounded weird. But yeah, I mean, hard to see where this will go. Uh, he could be leaving. KG could be leaving or retiring. Uh, Paul Pierce is likely not expected to be back. I think if it was up to him, he would be back. But who knows how that will play out. I know they were supposed to all get traded for Blake Griffin and whoever, Eric Bledsoe or whatever, uh, to the Clippers. But who knows where this will all go. Something to say and watch it out for. Uh, we know Rajon Rondo has been injured uh, this season and I think in the playoffs the season before. Um, will he stay or go? Who knows? Um, I don't... In my last video, I didn't talk about Lionel Hollins. I don't think he was done. Uh, I don't think he was officially let go yet, but they didn't renew his contract, the Memphis Grizzlies and Lionel Hollins. I think Doc Rivers, personally, would be a good fit. If he was looking for a new place to go, would be with the Grizzlies. Uh, the Grizzlies are much like the Celtics, maybe a little bit younger if you don't look at Randolph or whatever, um, as far as with their age, but... A defensive-minded team with the Celtics and, and the Grizzlies. Uh, the Grizzlies were the best defensive team. I guess they had the best. And they had the defensive player of the year. And one of the top defensive teams. Uh, the Celtics are known for their defense. I think Doc Rivers is known as a defensive guy. Uh, you had KG, who's a defensive player as well. Um, so I, th I think that would be a great fit. And much like um, Doc Rivers wouldn't have... He would have that point guard. He had Rajon Rondo with Celtics. I think he would have... a. Uh, a nice young star in the making with uh, Mike Conley Jr., who was also on the set of First Take today. Uh, but enough about that. He, I think, if if he was, you know, worried about that point guard leadership, being able to take care of the ball, you'll still have that in Memphis with Mike Conley. So you don't have to worry about, you know, you, I mean, I guess you can let go of Rondo and the Celtics, 
if that's what it came down to, you need to have your defensive presence and whatnot. You have Gasol there. Um, you know, you have pieces there. I mean, the team was in the Western Conference Finals, so it's not like it would be that big of a loss. Um, you know, I have a lot of stuff written down here. Sorry if I'm not looking directly in the camera or whatever. Um, but yeah, there's a lot with that. And I guess the news everyone was waiting for today, as well as we know with the Game 3, huge win for the Spurs. Uh, over the heat, we'll talk more about that in the podcast on Friday. Um, we'll actually we'll talk about Game Four because Game Four is tomorrow. Um, but anyway, so you know that was a pretty crazy game. Uh, if you're a Spurs fan, I mean, I guess if you're a Heat's fan as well, but you you weren't very happy about the outcome. Uh, LeBron James took a lot of the blame for that. Anyways, like I was saying, the main the main story that came out of that was the health of Tony Parker. Tony Parker. Uh, Something he said he felt some tightness in his hamstring. Um, didn't play much in the second half. I think he only played two minutes in the fourth quarter of all, or all of the second half. Um, so he just kind of sat out. wasn't really sure. Media was all around him. He was, still wasn't sure at the time. They said he can get an MRI. He got his MRI. And the results were just he has a grade one hamstring strain. Um, he hopes to play for game four. Um, it's not sure still whether or not he was was going to, but he hopes he does. Um, like I said, the game is tomorrow. He had a press conference today. He did mention that he wanted to play. Um, he's not sure. He'll talk to Coach Popovich about it, and they'll try and figure that all out. Popovich still wasn't sure about it either at the time. Uh, so, you know, as that goes along, just stay tuned uh, to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash sportsminded, all one word. Um, and we'll keep you updated with Tony Parker, um, Doc Rivers, the Celtics, Jason Kidd, Lionel Hollins, uh, who will coach the Grizzlies, the Clippers, all that and more. Um, I thank you guys for your support. Um, we've gotten our, we've had our best day so far as far as views. Last time I checked, we were up to 350, I believe. Um, so one of our better days on the website, sportsmindednews.com. Uh, the Facebook page, once again, facebook.com slash sports minded all one word you can follow us on twitter sports underscore minded uh, thank you guys for your support and watching the video uh, don't forget to please subscribe to the video not to the video but to the channel and have a nice day and thank you and enjoy sports world